great. I don't care. I want the car. Two years ago, something like that, I was looking for a new car to get. Something unusual, something about five grand, because that's about what I had to spend on another car. And I was looking at something like a, maybe a Yugo, maybe something weird like that, maybe another communist car, like a Lada or something. But at some point I decided there's a lot of off-lease electric cars available at, at around $5,000. There's tons of them on the market, like a Fiat 500e, or Smart ED in 2013 is about the year that they were, and I could get them for five, seven grand. I could even get Nissan Leafs for that price. But I decided, you know, I don't want, I don't want a Fiat that Fiat didn't want to make. I don't want a Smart named Ed. So I want something a little bit weird. It fits more into my personality, and I would like it more. So I had known about this small electric car called a Wego, and they were made here in Georgia. They weren't made here in Georgia, they were made in California. The headquarters is here in Georgia in the warehouse and everything. So I knew those existed, but the problem is the highway capable version of them, they only made a hundred, if that. So they were extremely, extremely hard to find and I thought, well, I'm never gonna find one of these things. The reason I was familiar with them was because the town I grew up near was Mexico, Missouri and there happened to be a car dealership that sold Wegos there, just in the middle of central Missouri. I think they sold like six of them, and it was called M&M Golf Cart. They, it was a golf cart dealership. But I was visiting my parents one weekend, and we drove through Mexico, Missouri, and there happened to be one sitting out on the edge of a lot of a heating and cooling place. And not only was it just sitting there, it had a for sale sign in the window, which was absolutely perfect. So I ran up to the, to the window, the car wrote down the phone number, and then went home. I thought, well, I have to get this. So I called the guy up, and he bought it for a business car. It was a heating and cooling place. He said, well, I just wanted to, something to run about town to go get estimates and stuff like that. I thought, Great. I don't care. I want the car. And he said he wanted 7000 for it. And I thought, all right, that's fine. And we set up a time so I could go look at it and maybe buy the car. And that date was exactly Earth Day. I thought, well, that's fantastic. I'll get my first electric car on Earth Day. So the Friday before Earth Day rolled around, and I get a call from the guy, and he said, all right, I took the car on a test drive, and uh, there was, it wasn't right. It was cutting out weirdly. It was, it was having problems. So I took it to the dealership that's close by, m and Golf Cart, and <laughs> they had a service. It was still under warranty at this point within two months, just for the battery, but it had two bad battery cells in it. So I got those replaced at the dealership before I even got the car. I thought, well, that's a little disappointing that this car broke before I even looked at it, but it's fixed now, under warranty. So a couple of weekends later, after it was fixed, after it was back from the dealership, I went to go look at the car finally. As soon as I opened the door, I think, no, not 7,000 for this thing. Because it only had 10,000 miles on this thing. But it looked like it had come straight out of the 90s and it had 300,000 miles on it. The seats were ripped, the, the rubber trim was ripped, there was a big gash in the bumper. The taillights and headlights surrounds, they were cloudy. They were like crayon colored. And this was a four year old car. It had been just sitting out in the sun for four years and it turned this shade of crayon. The whole thing squeaked most hilarious test drive of my life. This thing was a piece of crap. I mean, when you accelerate, it sounds like the front end is trying to separate itself from the car. It has no power whatsoever. Even if, even as an electric car, it doesn't feel like it could possibly get up to highway speed and the top speed limit is 65. But anyway, got done with the test drive. I took it back and I said, how about 4,500? Because I thought, well, I'm, I'm gonna be a shrewd negotiator. And he said, about 5000 And that was the, the price I, I paid for this thing. Now, the reason this thing is such a pile of crap is because these Wegos, they weren't, they weren't designed in-house. They were designed in... The body was designed in China. It was sold as the Shuanghua Noble in China, which is a Chinese knockoff of the first-generation smart car. And Wego, not having any money to produce a car of their own, they bought the body shells and then made them electric and put their own stuff in it. But the problem is that the 90% of the car is the Chinese 
stuff. So it could be a 300 horsepower electric car. It could be a Tesla rival. It's still a Chinese knockoff of a smart car to everyone that looks at it. I remember reading an article that a Wego, not a Schwang Huan Noble, a Wego was crushed in Germany because of copyright problems. But Wego seems to have made it out fine because, you know, they didn't build the car. They're just putting electrical bits in it. They bought this Chinese shell and they had to make it past US DOT crash ratings as well. So it, this shell had to be modified. And like the headlights are different. I think there's some extra crash absorbing structures and like the, the pillars and there's some padding on the pillars. And they got some exemptions, like uh, they don't have to have a compound multi-stage airbag. It's just, it's gonna blow it full force at any speed, stuff like that. I highly doubt it would blow it all. So I called up my insurance guy. I told him what it was. Of course, it didn't show up in their database. It doesn't exist to the rest of the world or even the United States. It hardly exists to Atlanta. And after coming up with nothing on his end, he said, okay, give me the VIN, give me the power, how many seats. We'll come up with a manual quote on it. So I forget what the original price was, but I think for a couple of months, I was paying like $240 a month on insurance for this stupid little electric car. And then later on I said, this is stupid. This is a worthless car that I'm paying outrageous insurance on. We need to renegotiate that. So I gave him the price that I paid for it, not the ridiculous MSRP of 36 grand. And it knocked it down to like 120 a month, which was a substantial difference. But after that, it broke. So I said, we'll just knock this down to liability only because Forget it. If it dies in the wreck, I probably will too. I don't need big insurance on this thing. It's broken a lot. I've actually restored it a little bit. I fixed the gash in the bumper. I replaced the tail lights. The marker lights were atrociously cloudy. I replaced those because Wego is still around and I can still get parts from them. I actually went to the warehouse. There's one guy there. His name's Brian. He seems lonely because his job is maintaining a fleet of almost non-existent Wegos that he mostly buys off retired well, estate sales. The company has since pivoted. They're called Autonomous Fusion now. They make self-driving car technologies. Thank God they're not making self-driving Wegos. They're just using that as a test mule. They had a low-speed version before the high-speed version just to make money from those sales to sell the high-speed version. But almost all of the owners of all of those cars are retirees because they had fixed income, they had some money in the bank, they could just buy the car, they had the tax incentive in mind, like $7,000 in Missouri, and they would just drive it around their retirement communities, and they won't, don't have to worry about gas. And then they die, and he buys them back in the factory. It goes 100 miles on a charge. It's more than the Smart ED even does now. It's more than a used Leaf probably would. I tested it on the highway, full speed, for as far as it would go with the air conditioner cranked all the way, and I got 86 miles of charge, which I thought was pretty good. If you go up a hill, you could have a race with a loaded semi and the loaded semi would win. I have trouble keeping it at 55 on hills, even slight grades. So I feel bad for people behind me or if I pull out to pass someone's going slow and then they speed up, there's nothing I can do at that point. I did have a guy very recently up in New Jersey. He said that they had a Wego on the lot with dead batteries. So that means it is it's less than worthless. You can't pay someone to get rid of this thing because the battery replacement is $15,000. And he contacts me, you like Wegos? You wanna, you wanna buy this car? I said, oh, how much? I was expecting it to be like a grand maybe. I was thinking, oh, I could just have it because it's, it's kind of a treasure trove of electric car parts because they didn't, they didn't make anything new in house. They just bought stuff off the shelf. And a, a Wego at a grand would be good. You could put all this stuff out of it into another car. But then he comes back to me with a window sticker. He said this car was never sold and he wants MSRP for it. 36 grand. And by this time, I think the tax incentives are probably gone by now. Even if they're not, it has a dead battery in it. What am I gonna do? What's anyone gonna do with this car? So it's, it's gonna just sit there and die forever. It's really loud because the doors don't seal properly. So you just hear wind noise. And it's an electric car, you'd want quiet. Anyway, I noticed while I was driving around that the air conditioning wasn't working well. It would, it would get it down to about 80 inside. 
and then the air conditioner would shut off. So it was working up until that point, but it was like the temperature was off. I had it all the way on the cold side. So later on, when I visited the WeGo warehouse, I mentioned this problem to the guy there, and he is just, he is just a knowledge hole for all of these things. And he said, well, your potentiometer is probably off because this, this knob is just backed by a rotary potentiometer. And he turned me on to the diagnostic mode that you can put the car on. You just hold the odometer stock while you're turning it on and it shows readouts of everything. So it, it showed the knob reading out when it was set to all the way cold, it was set to like 86 degrees. So what I had to do <laughs> to fix this was Take the whole knob assembly off, take the rotary potentiometer off the back of it, rotate it so that the physical stop on the knob mat matched up with the physical stop on the rotary potentiometer. And now I have full air conditioning, but <laughs> if I set it all the way down, it's at 68 degrees, which is what it should be. If I turn it up one little tiny notch, still at 68, one more notch, 74. If I go one more notch, it goes all the way up to like 86 or something. So it's still way into the cold side and it's set to 86. So you just have to know how that, uh, that knob works. But I've had the car for one and a half years now. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite cars in my fleet, my small fleet. And I, it's just drivable comic relief at this point. I absolutely love that thing.